What's going on, everybody? Welcome into this episode of Jack the Ramses. I'm your host, Danny Morang, joined as always by now the undisputed champion of football picks and college football, <laughs> where Oregon State plays USC at USC. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it down. Very, very specific. I uh, thought you summed it up very well last night by saying the wrong team was favored. I couldn't have agreed with you more all week on that one. I didn't quite get that line. Eleven points. It's one thing if you would have told me. Brandon, OSU is going to lose at USC. I'd be like, okay. I've, I, I, I was just there the last time they lost. Uh, it's another to tell me the 11 point number. I, I don't know what out of USC makes you feel confident betting that kind of number ever. I thought that maybe that, that they, they'd freed the demon, so to speak. At you Wazoo? Know, yeah. That was like, okay. Yeah. We've got five day one NFL guys. Should I think okay. you're. I think you're right. Your overall point is right. The problem was, and this is why I loved OSU aside from fandom, mm -hmm. uh, you, your your better quarterback got hurt in that game, and yeah. you had to go back to a guy that is clearly not the guy, and I had no clue what he was going to do off his injury. So I like that <sighs> position for Oregon State. But. It, 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 it hurt. But uh, bets will be paid, so I will get the Venmo, and <laughs> or, or you can uh, – you can I can I can call the Abbeys for you. Uh, on a Venmo particular... works best. Okay. Venmo works we'll, we'll, best. We'll Venmo you, and uh, you know what, I, I, what we should do is uh, I should reach out to Miss Miss Abby and be like, hey, can we can we put this on the tab? Have a we have a conversation of... going. I'll just say this: we have mm. a conversation started with our girl Abby, and I hope that there is some light to be shed this week. That's all I'll say about that. It's uh, who doesn't love to shed a little bit of light on a lot of really good pizza. That was what right. I drowned my sorrows in last night was a pepperoni and jalapeno <laughs> Abby's, Abby's pizza last night. So how good is pepperoni jalapeno? And if you like pineapple, you add it to that bad boy. Oh, that's a great. Pizza. I can tell you right now, Amara Babsist would, would would definitely hop in on that. She's 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 pro pineapple as well. I'm super pro pineapple. There's no other position in my in my opinion, but you know what? Teach their own. I, I think you're going to get crushed for that one. Maybe not Lord of the Rings level crushed, but you're going to get we crushed. See, see, let me just say, we'll move on because I don't want people to complain <laughs> that we didn't talk Blazers. We always do that. We do mm. the, you like pineapple, you're in the vast minority. I'm sorry there, Bob. The top three selling pizza at every chain includes pineapple. There's no way I'm in the minority. If I'm gonna have, to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to talk pineapple. to Miss Abby about that and do some market okay. research. Okay. F find out where, like, how much pineapple? What is the pineapple to pepperoni ratio that they purchase oh, in? To come see, on. to see where how how far it's skewed. You should do the pineapple to anchovies if you think it's so absurd. That well, ratio, de depending on what market you're in. That can go a little more sideways than you think. Let's go to Baton Rouge, and I bet you pineapple still wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got media day coming up. We got a couple questions. Is this? It's a quasi mailbag pod slash uh, media day preparation. Uh, maybe between now and tomorrow at eleven a.m., I will. I don't know. Put together a bingo card. I like that. I you think like there's going to be some pretty easy bingo hits. Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe randomize a few to put out on Twitter. We'll see what happens. But I'm more just, you know, I, I really cannot wait for some of these questions to be asked and to hear either the spin out or, um, for lack of a better term, the balls it's going to take for him to really sell us on some of the answers. Mm -hmm. Guys, guys, Ben McLemore, he shot 42%. What did this team need? Shooting. Yeah, it's, I addressed it. It's. I, I love the straight lines that get drawn at these they it it goes through any context whatsoever and it's just the singular line like i'm going to take this one particular thing from this one question that you've asked here and that's what i'm going to address and i'm going to just completely ignore the rest of it so um yeah no i'm, I'm going to do a bingo card now <laughs> <laughs> uh speaking of bingo cards uh i think this you would hear this in any discussion around the point trouble is this from b wild at brennan dub what does it take for a player to not qualify as a blazers legend i feel like most players earn the designation with a few exceptions raymond felton uh is the one name that he put in here if you're talking about a player not being a blazers legend uh threatening to fight the fan base is probably pretty high up there um yeah. criminal misconduct that doesn't include socially acceptable things such as marijuana probably you're probably in that same uh vein um uh, this is the divorcing Damon Stoudemire from uh, weed wrapped in foil and, you know, Ruben Patterson and domestic violence. I was going to say Ruben Patterson's definitely in the Ray Felton camp. Yeah. Um, 
he just didn't threaten fans. He threatened teammates. He threatened, and we know how he treated nannies. Like, there's a whole thing yeah. with with Ruben there. Uh, the, da- the Damon one is, I never really, as an adult, it's even more ridiculous how much it's, bad it's we It's funny how bad it looked. It looked. But but this is to me why it looked bad. It wasn't weed. It was that you just graduated a biology degree and you thought you'd go through a metal detector with it wrapped in foil. In foil. I mean, you couldn't have told me you didn't take your classes any stronger than doing that. There, there's no other. Shout out the reason. fine the fine institution of learning that is the University of Arizona. <laughs> You've ever seen Spinal Tap? No. Uh, there's a scene where he walks through a, a metal or a metal detector. I believe it's in an airport, and he's got a cucumber down his pants, but it's wrapped in foil. Oh. And it, that, that that's what keeps like popping into my head every time I hear that story because I remember watching that as a kid. And yes, I watched Spinal Tap as a kid because my parents were awesome. Um, but yeah, like the 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 joking mechanism for uh, not calling was a Blazer legend. Pretty much is don't be an uber douche and don't you know get wrapped up in violent crime. I think that's pretty much the bar. It's tough, tough, tough one to not clear. We're a pretty welcoming market in general, and like even guys that don't I think work that's out, underselling it entirely. But yes, well, I, I know, but like you know, Thomas Robinson classifies to me for many people as, "Hey, he gave us those four or five moments, and I'll never forget how great those moments." The were, chase like, down, the chase down dunk and leak out is still yeah. one of the stupidest. Amazing. moments i've ever seen but it was like pure bliss it was an absolute perfect play uh let me ask you though of guys who really do classify as this right jokingly mm-hmm. we use a lot of players these two names i think get put into the light but i'm really curious if we're to really take that term seriously blazers legend mm-hmm. and maybe you quantify that in a lot of different ways on the court leadership teammate community i don't know maybe it's a ra- an all-encompassing thing would you say Andre Miller and Joel Prisbilla fall into these categories. It's it's hilarious. I in the back of my head when you started saying that, I'm gonna go. I was like, oh my counter, this is gonna be Andre Miller because <laughs> on, on, Andre's my guy, hundred hundred percent through and through. Like, yeah, he is a brand of basketball unto himself, and like the the general idea of him, he just has like his own ethos, his own style of cool, right? Like getting right. dropping a fifty piece without knocking down threes is insane, and just. You kind of wish that it been there had been a way to figure it out between him and Brandon at that point in time. Um, but Brisbane is another one. Uh, telling Carlos Boozer, meet me after. Like, Brisbane was, I mean, the vanilla gorilla. Like, it's just, they they had their own levels of cool. And they, they, they came into the culture but made it their own too. So I think without, like, being, well, Andre's, Right on the edge of being a Hall of Famer, let's be honest. Um, Joel, not as much, obviously. But I think if you're talking about not the the best players this franchise has ever had, like the next level, yes. Yeah, the, the, those are those are guys who they just embodied what it meant to be here and be beloved, right? That's kind of how I viewed it, too. And, and Andre, I mean, shout out to Andre. He gives every guy with a sub-10-inch vert motivation and hope in life to have a 13 14 year career and not be able to jump more than seven inches off the ground yeah. is and that's inspiring that's a disney movie quite frankly yeah uh, what would you what would you call it the boy who couldn't jump <laughs> and you the go, fact that you had that, that that like that that ready was like you you've i feel like you've sent this off to mike rich a few times and for those who don't know no, <laughs> mike rich has written a ton of of Disney movies that are based on real life sports. I think uh Miracle, wow. uh what was the what was the pitcher one? I was gonna say we, we, we had the guy like Randy Quaid, not Randy Dennis Quaid played the old pitcher who yeah. used to be the teacher. Like if that's a movie, Andre Miller is a movie. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like you just just show this guy what's funny and what's funny is he has a little bit of a Mike Tyson voice. He's got a higher pitch voice, which you don't expect, but he's the wildly toughest SOB you've ever seen out of LA. And again, we're, we're talking about the Thomas Robinson, Will Barton chase down dunk. Andre Miller running over Blake Griffin is still one of the most singular moments in my lifetime where I was in shock and awe. And so were the referees, so much so that they were just like, nah, didn't see it. Didn't see yeah. that six foot one, 210 pound dude run over six foot nine Blake Griffin like he wasn't there. Well, look, the pride, the pride of Rick Majerus, I think, deserves a movie at some point in his life. R.I.P. to Big Rick out there. Mm-hmm. And honestly, let me ask you this. I got another random question. 
So if you took Andre Miller and you took Brandon Roy and they both started talking, which one classifies more as voice doesn't match what you see? Oh, Andre. See, I think it's Brandon. Really? I think I think it's – dude, Brandon Roy was – he is 6'6". Six, six. When he played, he was probably 2 – what would you say, 210, 215? 220, 225. 220, okay, yeah, yeah. Brandon was a big dude. He was thick. He wasn't yeah. skinny, right? No. So let's call it 220. So 6'6", six, six, 220. Yeah, I think every time I talked to Brandon, we were sitting down, so I never got like that overbearing – yeah, see, you, the post game, he'd have like a game winner. You'd be going nuts, and then you'd stop to hear him talking. Like, you know, I'm just out there. I'm playing my heart out. And I'm like, it, this it is just not didn't, matching. It didn't it track. Did, oh, it didn't track. But I was like, I still loved him. I gotta oh, not yeah. like him for that. No, but. Andre Miller was always like, oh, you know, man, just had a good game. <laughs> I know he was always so quiet. It, it, it sounded like a, a mellowed out version of Terrence Howard and Hustle and Flow. Oh, I like that comp. It, That's it, a good comp. It was just. But it was just so. That, I think it was part of what made him so cool. Like yeah. his his voice, like came through his character. So um, we should do that as a poll question sometime with the show. Whose voice did it match how they looked? Andre Miller or Brandon Roy? Oh, that the results on that's probably going to be interesting, right? Yeah, because like when you when you first think about it, I think Andre jumps out. But if you if you've heard Brandon talk, yeah, I mean it does make sense. Yeah, him um, and Patrick, Patrick Mahomes in this category too. The dude's a Cajun when he talks. It's like <laughs> I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed. You know, you know, we're going out there, we're throwing football, and <laughs> well, I mean, let's, like, let's be honest, it, it's Cajun Kermit. Let's let, it's let's let's Cajun let's, Kermit. Let's qualify it. <laughs> um, this from Desert Duck at Ryan Rob twenty one twenty one. So people always talk about what Dame can do to improve defense, lobs, interior passing. Why doesn't the conversation revolve around where everyone else can improve? For example, where can Nas improve that would help the team immensely? You want to, you want to take this one on first? I think the reason you talk about what Dame can improve upon, like you specifically highlight this a lot, is the the lack of touch he has on lob passes mm -hmm. and just passing in the paint in general is not as great as, as a lot of other premier guards. I, I think the reason we highlight that more so than his point, everybody else, is because the team goes as Dame goes. So if Dame is able to harness in some way becoming a really good lob player or you know, finding ways to bring guys into the paint and give Nurk or, or Zeller or whoever easy dunk layup situations that the team is going to be better for that. Yep. I think other guys can find where they need to maybe go role wise, but overall the league, as we've said many times is it's about how your best players play. And if Dame has areas where he can get better and he does get better, you seemingly assume the team's getting better as well. Go, go full math nerd here. ROI return on investment. Nas is on the floor 12 minutes a night. Nas getting better at a singular skill, while is impactful, isn't nearly as impactful. Let's use the NFL analogy. Your left guard getting better at pass pro is helpful. Your quarterback, who's the only player on the field outside of the center who touches the ball every single possession, getting rid of the ball faster and more accurately is significantly more impactful than your left guard turning into Steve Hutchinson. It just, right. It is, and it's. That doesn't mean you don't want that left guard to get better. It doesn't mean you don't want Nasir Little to get better. You do, of course, you do. But when you look at how that pie is divided and what's most impactful, that's why you often hear about why Damian Lillard or why C.J. McCollum or why Yusuf Nurkic. Those two hundred million dollar plus contracts come with, you know, expectations. Right, And when you have the ball, when you are doing X, Y, or Z, your ability to be better at those things, it's measured in the same manner. That's just kind of how it works. I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, I know we're using football terms for basketball podcasts, but take Josh Allen. I mean, the Bills had a good offensive line. Could you have said, hey, how can the Buffalo Bills block even better? Ultimately, Josh Allen had to take that MVP level yeah. step for Buffalo to be considered a legit threat. So. While it is important that the role guys find their roles and figure out their weaknesses and get better, uh, all of this is going to hinge on your number one becoming that much more invincible to a certain degree. And so that's why I, I'd say that's why we talk about it more than guys like Nas. And even in the grander scheme, this is why I hammer the whole, listen, adding Larry Nance Jr. is good. Getting Cody Zeller in, in to replace Cantor. Those are, like, those are good things. Right. But, again, the top... The top is what matters the most in the NBA. It's not this, this diversification among 22 players. It's five. 
And in of those five, the the burden, the weight is significantly adjusted to one or two guys. That's just the way the NBA works. And so when you're when you're talking about like what you can do, you're talking about you're trying to find the person who has the most impact. Because unless Nasir Little turns into a superstar to have that impact, then it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to to be invested fully um, in what that overall is going to look like. Right. That tracks, right? Yeah. All right. Looking ahead to media day. Uh, We're recording this Sunday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Media day is Monday morning, 11 a.m., Neil Olshea. And surprise to, I think, a lot of folks, Chris McGowan is going to be made available. I would assume that probably has to do a lot with the TV deal. Discussing what's going to go. I, well, there. I think it. I, I think it's also ticket sales, COVID protocol. Um, you know, I think it's going to be all. Yeah, it's going to be all those kind of business situations they're dealing with. I, I, I'm really hoping Chris can maybe enlighten us or give us an update on the TV situation because I, I'm pretty close to having to switch to Fubo, but I'm not a big fan of having to do that. Not pulling the trigger um, quite yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm holding out hope. And if I, you know, if I don't have the preseason games, um. You know, could be a problem, but I, I can still find a way to to get access to that. I just uh, I, uh, I'm hoping not have to switch. I think I can get you covered. <laughs> I'll figure that out. Yeah, wink, wink. Um, remember, folks, p- stream your games legally. Absolutely. Don't don't. Why would you do it the other thing? Don't don't do anything else. This is a proper proper show, and we we, we would suggest <laughs> nothing otherwise. Um, but you mentioned COVID protocols. Yeah, uh, there was an article in Rolling Stone that came out. Uh, and I'm sure part of this is going to be addressed tomorrow in some roundabout way. Uh, the Blazers, uh, I have been told and we've heard, is uh, at vaccination rate. They are at 100%. So not something they have to deal with. But <laughs> league-wide, there are uh, guys higher up the rung than people probably expected. Um, in Andrew Wiggins and Kyrie Irving. Um, Jonathan Isaac. Uh, there's certainly some rumblings going on around Devin Booker right now. Uh, yeah, that one's he either has COVID or he's also not getting vaxxed. I don't know. I yeah, can't know how to read that situation. We're uh, unsure. Uh, yeah. But I have reached out behind the scenes, and there's a larger number than people really want out there uh, as far as players in the league who aren't vaxxed. But would anybody be so I see I, I I read the article and I'll fully acknowledge I think the article is an awful look for the league and it makes oh, a terrible. lot of it makes a lot of their players look really uneducated and stupid. Mm-hmm. Um I, that being said, I still would have guessed there's a higher percentage than I would assume unvaccinated. I mean, this is you, you're going through this actually you're going through it. It's just not a, a deal, a big deal breaker because of the sport. The NFL went through this. Yeah. You had you had a guy like Cole Beasley that was like loudly talking about how all the research he did concluded he didn't need to take the vaccine or the entire and, Minnesota Vikings team, apparently, or the entire Minnesota Vikings team. Kirk Cousins dad is a famous, you know, preacher who is super anti vaccine stuff like that. So you've had these storylines pop up in football. The reason they're not a big deal is because quite frankly, um, the league you're just replaceable. Those. Yeah. You're, Cole Beasley is fine, but you know, Buffalo would get past Cole Beasley, not playing for them in, in a game. Whereas the NBA, if you got Andrew Wiggins that can't play home games, you've got Kyrie Irving that can't play home games. This is a huge deal. Even Orlando. Orlando could be a fun little team this year. And Isaac, when healthy, is a good defensive player. So I think there's, you know, there's an impact that's greater in the NBA than there is the NFL. Um, but it, that that article, man, it's Kareem was the MVP of that article. I don't yeah, he came out looking pretty good. Question. And I just what I continue to be puzzled on puzzled is the lack of uh the lack of trust we have in people that are clearly smarter than anything i could ever wish to be and while you don't believe them for this the minute your heart beats irregularly or the minute you or have keep trouble, it simply when you blow out a knee when you blow out it like these are the same people you trust for that but you think that they're lying or there's some like huge agenda to lie about this, that's I, it's just puzzling to me that people actually believe and and fall and live into this reality because it's just the numbers just don't bear out what the stuff is that's being um, spread around and and talked about. I mean, it's it's alarming 
how incorrect some of this stuff is. And yet here these guys are that are worth millions of dollars. And the best they do is their own research. And you conclude that you're right. It's like Jonathan Isaac was at Florida State for what, two years? I don't think he got a virology degree. So that's the point. And yet his YouTube research has concluded that he knows more than uh, a Fauci of the world. It's just It's interesting to me that we've gotten to that spot. Yeah. Oh, or, you know, you're part of a master plan to get you on a database for Satan. Uh, moving on. <laughs> that's, you know. Yeah, yeah listen. We, we love conspiracy theories a lot more than I thought. Yeah. I mean, I think people, uh, they, they look towards them. But I, I bring all of this up because we're going to get a heavy dose of, of this tomorrow. Uh, we're going to hear... Uh, and Rolling Stone did allude to it, and I don't think the league has entirely made it public yet, that because of the Delta variant, if you're courtside, you're going to be masked. That was, that was in there. That, I, don't, I don't think that was – I don't think that had been communicated by the league entirely yet. I, do you, have you seen anything like that? I, I, didn't, you know, I didn't know about that until you had reminded me that that was going to happen. And yeah. I, I honestly was a little surprised we were going to do that. I, I thought not having right on the court – was beneficial to a lot of players. I felt like they had an idea of the spacing a little better. Um, and so if you could push that back, I, I'd be an advocate for that either way. Because even if you sit courtside, you're not literally where it used to be. You're eight feet back. You're, you're a couple feet back, yeah. Your, your seats are still amazing. Like You still are hearing all the talk. You're, you're right there in the action. They're going to dive and be right near you when they go out of bounds. Like I, I, I've always kind of wanted them to push the courtside seats back because it's I go to these games. You've been to these games. Yeah. It's so weird. I've seen like Nick Batum do an inbounds pass and there's a server with two cocktails and a nacho a foot to his left. And he's over here with three minutes to go in a game, a pivotal moment, having to make a pass. And there's a, there's a cocktail waiter just like, guess I'm waiting. Yeah. It's just like, can you hurry up? <laughs> uh, on, a, on a little bit of a tangent there, I, I really still want them to mic up the damn court, and it's so frustrating. I, I would pay five bucks a month. I'd probably pay probably close to five bucks a game to. But to lawsuits, hear it, but. man. There's they, the the language that those guys use. While I wouldn't agree with a lot of it, I'd also be able to. It's competition. Yeah, I'd, I'd be able to disconnect those two uh, realities. So I. But I the business, willing... the businesses of the world, will not when they see when they have no. their guys out there who are have their their shiny images, you know, well, taken and, down. You know somebody's going to record the phone. That audio is going to go viral, and you're not going to have anything. You're not going to be able to get out of that. So No, it sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, but as we take a look at the rest of Media Day, uh, I don't know. How do, you, how do you frame this as far as um, what are you looking for and or expecting uh, to come out of Media Day? Okay, so let me flip this on you and ask you this question because okay. I really want your answer. What is the biggest question you want to hear answered? Of all the questions, what's the biggest one to be asked that you assume will be asked and you really want to hear what that answer is? Because I know what mine is and it's not even a it's not even a contest. The Chauncey stuff won't be I mean there's there's guys that are gonna ask, but it's not gonna get answered. The Chauncey uh, past stuff? No, just as far as like the the search and everything else that kind of like went on with it, because they oh. never really addressed it. Um it, for me, if I could get like truth serum, how much Dame is going to be on or off the ball, how happy he's going to be, like what's it going to take to keep him happy, that kind of a situation. Because we keep hearing, well, Nurk, you know, well, I'm going to be on the ball more. Okay, so who's not going to be on the ball? CJ, see, here's here's the the conflict that I keep seeing. Well, if CJ returns to his 13 game uh, start to the season, his best of his career, this team's going to be great. Well, in that 13 games, Nurk was not on the ball. Nurk was awful to start the season. He was not involved. So what does that balance look like? I think that's, that's like that and like the idea of who is really getting like, – we, we got that, that article from Quick the other day about um, Nas is, is really excited with a new coaching staff because it's a clean slate, and he's been promised that he's going to be one of the first guys off the bench. Well, so is Larry Nance. So is Anthony Simons. So is so Cody, Cody Zeller. Zeller. Um, they all can't be the first guy off the bench. You're not running ten deep. Like that's no. just not happening. So they might just start the season. They, they might run. They they'll probably run nine. They may run ten just to kind of see what happens. Well, I'm talking after like 
35 games. Yeah, but <laughs> I thought that was a little bit weird, so I think that's probably where I would start is like what is the goal and who is what is the actual pecking order? It's a long roundabout way of getting to that, I think, is what is the actual pecking order and what is it really going to look like? It's a good question. Um, I think it's one of those they give their best answers that – sound good versus I, I don't know if there's a truth to be shared in that answer. I think that's more of a, no, no, but hold on, bear with me. I, I think it's one of those, Go on. they want to figure that out as they try it. You know what I mean? Like how can you really place a percentage on how you use Nurk with the ball, off the ball, the rotation stuff? Like, I don't know I if think you, you can. can do that yet. I don't see. I don't know. I think Chauncey's going to have, they're going to have to uh, feel it out, no doubt. Yeah, there's a real feel-out period, I think, for him as a as a new head coach, and I think he's going to lean on Dame a lot uh, from the on-court, pers- uh, on-court perspective, Scott Brooks, with all the experience he has. But I don't know. I, I think it's a great question. I just don't know if they can truly, even if they were being honest, commit to a percentage of that kind of stuff yet. Not even necessarily just a percentage, but like what what is what is in their head? What are they looking for? What are they shooting for? What is the goal in that respect? Because I think they have a goal in mind a goal in, in touches. Hey, we want to get in X amount of touches a game. And then want to get them here, here and here. Now right. they won't do that because that's a little, little bit too game planny. Um, you don't want to show your hands too early, but again, I, I, that's me like getting it with, with true serum. I think it's kind of what I've gone. What, what's the, what's the question that you're looking for? Oh, the question for me, and it's, it's been this way since he said the words. Now I, I could have not been lazy and pulled up the exact quote. So forgive me. For we love we love lazy spray. If if I'm not mistaken, Dame was basically asked about the offseason moves, and he said, "What he didn't view he didn't view them as oh that it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. It yeah. wasn't groundbreaking for them. So I I think the question's pretty cut and dry. You get the exact quote from Dame because if you don't come if you don't come to the general manager with specific like remember like he had that thing with Orlando where Orlando didn't properly quote something yeah. and anyways you get the exact quote from dame and you basically say hey neil uh dame x amount of months ago said and i quote yada 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 about the roster you've traded for larry nance jr since then have you done enough and you're at your best addition in some aspects is larry nance jr do you believe you lived up to what damian lillard said this team needed this offseason i think that's that question in some form of it is the question of questions to me because it's it's going to piss him off, first of all. And I, <laughs> I, I don't mean to ask that question to piss him off. It's just, no, well, come on. It, 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 if, we're, if we're talking about percentages, again, yeah. there's a percentage of you who's like, ah, I'm okay with that causing that reaction. Well, but see, here's, here's my thing. I'm okay causing the reaction. My point is it's not about the reaction. It's about... If this the was any other major media market, he'd get seven to ten of those kind of questions. But because he's in happy little Portland where everybody wants to be best friends so they can be sourced or or not be uh, uh, ostracized um, by the organization, ostracized, excommunicated, those questions get asked like once or twice, maybe every two press conferences. So to that the GM question, that who comes to two press conferences a year. That has to be a question. Like in some way, that rotation of questions, that kind of question has to be brought up. And whether he likes it or not, it doesn't matter. I, I still want to hear that one's going to get a good take on it. I can, I can already tell you right now. Well, Jace, uh, at that point in time, clearly uh, Dame was uh, in a place where uh, he was questioning some things. And uh, we've had discussions, obviously, since then. Uh, we've made moves uh, to improve the roster and uh, in, in places of weakness. Uh, we have increased our ability with uh, versatility in the lineup. Larry Nance Jr. can play the th- some a little bit of three, a little bit of four, a little bit of the five. Uh, he'll really help. Uh, he's a great glue guy. Comes with a strong background. Uh, obviously, the son of Larry Nance. <laughs> Just an unimportant part of that. He'll throw some shit in there. You know he will. You know he will. He former Laker, by the way. Yeah. Lakers here's have, the thing. Uh, when I put the bingo card together, I will put a square in there for Neil Olshay says irrelevant shit. Like, it, <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's gonna be like half the bingo card. But but, but do you real. know what I mean? Like, it'll it'll be like it will have nothing to do with the question, but it's gonna spice it up. And Neil loves to spice it up. He he so, he plays it up. But okay. 
So you got to think of a way then, because that's that's totally an answer I buy that he would use. Mm -hmm. There has to be though maybe a caveat, a two part. You say, was this a good enough off season according to the superstars' wishes or thoughts? You, you, and, you can't. You can't. That's the thing is you can't include Dame in it. Because he'll say, well, See, I, I, I can't, have to. I can't He's speak a franchise for franchise player. Well, no, no. You say what Dame says, but you, do you say that you have to address it directly to Neil? Oh, no. You address it to Neil. This isn't a question for anybody. No, no, no. But no I'm Neil. saying, but the question has to be do you think that you've addressed Damian Lillard's concerns? Because oh, he'll, right, right. he'll deflect it and say, well, you know, I can't speak for Dame. Da, 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 da. Right, 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 right. It has right, to right. be to, directly to him. He, and then you, you have to. You have to be like, for for the record, you do think this team is the legit title contender in the NBA this year. Like, you have to get that right there, black and white ink. Well, I can tell you as you say best. it there. Listen, uh, Sean, we, we go into every season not to, you know, go into the lottery. We go in every year thinking title. See, that's not an answer. I'd be like, that's, you didn't answer. You're not answering my <laughs> tell question. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me uh, I'm You're wrong. not wrong, but it's like, this is a yes or no question. Do you think this team is legitimately as currently constructed a, can tie, a title contender in the Western Conference? Well, there's a lot there, of things that have to go. I mean, it's just like, you can, he can dance around that. And if he does, I'll just go, okay, great. He's dancing around that question. Yeah. But give me a direct answer. Like, put your feet to the goddamn fire. You're so confident in your roster construction ability then back it Then be like, yes, we're, we are contending for the championship with this team this year. And if you're wrong, then yeah, we'll all go, duh, we saw that coming. But if you end up being right. They, they did this before. They did this before after the, the 18, 19 season and they got punched in the face. Remember they had, was that, that the year he said they, they had they, the dinner and they all talked about title uh, at the team dinner. It was, was this the year though, that he said Al Farouk at the four, gets us nine games better and they they failed to reach that mark wasn't was that the year you're that was talking the year, about year before yeah it just it is what it is and i, I don't want this to turn like the, the the neil bash fest but like neil press conferences are always a disaster so um and in the disaster in like the best possible way because they, they are fun to pick apart because they, he does play games um it, it is what it is at this point what what do you expect to come out of all of this what is the expectation um, coming out of media day when you and I hop on tomorrow to talk about this? What, what is the headline that you think is going to come out of that? I expect, I expect there to be for there to be a lot of, um, a lot of what you said in your hypothetical Neil answer. I think the, 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 fe the feeling I'm going to get is Dame talking about the off the court drama and how he'll reiterate again. I, you never heard me say any of that. Uh, no, Dame, Dame's going to walk that path of you heard other people say stuff. Yes, he's like, I never did that. I think which Dame's is why those people exist. That's why agents I, and media sources exist. I think Chauncey's going to have. I think you're going to hear a lot of. We have committed. We're all in on this together. We're going to be working hard. We understand last year was a. We came up short. I think you're going to hear this real camaraderie vibe. That's like, hey, Chauncey's here now. The energy's turning. It's the honeymoon. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're going to hear a lot of selling of how excited and, and great this team potentially could be. I think that's overall the theme you're going to walk away from the press. And no matter how you feel about the answers, that's what you, I think you're going to walk away from is that's what they're pushing. Hey, we're all in. We're committed. We're doing this. We're going to work together. We're all going to try harder on defense. Like You're going to hear all of that kind of stuff. If I'm going to take anything else away from any of this, because it mostly is going to be uh, make you roll your eyes, I do want to hear from Chauncey because even in his own press conference, he hasn't had a chance to talk a ton. Uh, and I thought that when he was given that chance, he acquitted himself pretty well. And clearly he's already got the young guys buying in like that. So there's, there's a communication level there that the guys are, are appreciating. So I, I would very much like to get him personally. I'd like to get him with, without Neil or Chris in the room. I, right. I, think, I think that would be beneficial. Um, I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow, but we'll, we'll eventually work our way there as the season unwinds. But I, th I think that would be beneficial for not just him, but us, uh, the, the quote-unquote media uh, who take all this stuff in and process it. But uh, I think that's the thing that I'm looking forward to, the, the, at least the overall. Um, Players-wise, I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of the guys already, so I kind of have an understanding of what, what we're looking for. Um, I, I don't think we're going to get too many surprises. 
in that regard. Mm. I don't think we're going to get the uh, Mo Harkless, oh, yeah, by the way, I had surgery, and I'm not going to be ready for the season like we did, what was that, two, three years ago now? Uh, that was a fun one. So um, let's go ahead and wrap it up there. We'll keep it a little bit shorter than usual. Uh, what, what, what do you got coming up this week on 1080 The Fan? Good, sir. Well, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to react to my Oregon State Beavs destroying your Trojans in L.A. for the first time since Eisenhower was in office. Uh, Look at that. Gonna... USC, always historical, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they still have number 32 up there in the Coliseum. Um, I think we'll also get to the rest of the Pac-12. Oregon. Look, Oregon had a great win against Ohio State, but Ohio State's starting to look kind of like... Maybe they suck. Yeah, well, by Ohio State standards, like a three-loss type team, potentially. Um, so not to say Oregon is overhyped, because I'm not ready to go there in this conference, but they that wasn't a really impressive game against Arizona. Arizona's awful. They're one of the worst, if not the worst, teams in the Power Five. And they only won that game by, I think, eight. Um, so we'll talk about Oregon. We'll talk about the Pac-12. We'll get into the NFL. It's going to be a really busy week on the fan. Uh, how are your uh, futures bets? Uh, how, how are those holding up? Futures bets are still alive. Um, my J.K. Dobbins ticket is dead. Mm. That died the minute he tore his ACL before Marcus Peters. Yeah. But I, we're so hopeful. It's still early to conclude on futures tickets yet unless you bet on the Chicago Bears to win their division and they average 1.1 yards per play in an NFL game in 2021, the Lord of our Savior. Putting money on Justin Fields to play football for the Chicago Bears this year, good. Putting money on Justin Fields and the Bears this year, bad idea. Do you know they're 1.1 yards per play? That is the worst in a century. Historical, a, baby. A hundred, Historical. A hundred years? A hundred years? <laughs> Ooh, boy. Man. All right. Remember, folks, you can find us on YouTube, on Spotify, on iTunes. Like, rate, review, subscribe. Do all of the things. Uh, the growth, the support, everything has been fantastic, uh, as Sprague alluded to. Perhaps there's something coming with Abby's. Perhaps not. But uh, we appreciate you supporting uh, our, our sponsors and, and our wonderful, wonderful people who uh, pay us money to come along and do this. And, and you know, thank you. Yes, you like rate, that? review, subscribe. And uh, we have a good Monday show coming your way. Yeah, Media Day will be fun. So uh, we'll catch you yeah. guys uh, right after Media Day. Uh, I'll, I'll pop in here and grab Sprague by the ears, and we'll, we'll dice it up. Uh, I'll probably be live tweeting through it uh, in the Zoom conference, uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, we will have actual basketball very quickly uh, coming around in, uh, I think, technically a week. So, yep. yeah, uh, we'll be after it very, very, very quickly, and uh, we'll we'll have some fun stuff. And uh, I've teased it in the past. We'll have some more TV-ish segments. It won't be uh, quite as wide open and, and wide-ranging as it is right now. We'll, uh, we'll tighten it up a little bit for the season just because of time constraints. And I have a couple of things that I've got uh, to announce that I don't even think I've told you about yet. So uh, we have some cool stuff coming. And then uh, in the meantime, uh, I've got uh, some content at Blazers Edge and some uh, breakdown videos that I'm going to do before the season, taking a look at a couple of guys uh, and what to expect coming forward. So as always, at Danny Morang on social, at Brandon Sprague. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.